Hey guys, welcome back to Bait and Tackle. <clears throat> Today we're going to be doing some underspins. And I've got two herring head underspin molds from Do It Molds. And we're going to use the HHU5A, which is the bigger underspin mold. So we're going to do some of those. And we're also going to use the HHU6SA, this one to do some of the smaller ones. These are the really tiny underspins. So we'll make a batch of each, and that way you guys get to see uh, what they look like, what they come out like. So let's do it. Okay guys, so for these molds, the bigger mold, the, um, trying to find the, the model number again, the HHU5A, which is the bigger underspins, <clears throat> they use a 5 aught and a 4 aught. Gamagatsu 604 style hook. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to step it down and I'm going to see if we can use a 3 odd hook in here and see if we can get away with it. So I'm going to use a 5 odd hook for the bigger ones, for the 5 eighths, the half, and the 3 eighths. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 4 aught hook if it'll fit in the quarter ounce, which it will. It looks like it'll fit okay. And then I'm going to go down even one step farther to a 3 aught on the eighth ounce. Now, it is not recommended for that usage. It says that a 4 out would be recommended for the 1 8 but it looks like the 3 out, the 3 out look, fits in there perfectly. And the 4 out fits in the 1 quarter too. So I think you could, you could go down to a you could go down to a 4 if you wanted to. But the 5s work pretty good with a 4 inch swim bait just from personal experience. So we're going to go ahead and do those. Now the next thing you're going to need in the big mold is the um, the eyes, the the actual piece, the actual wire, the actual wire piece that goes in the bottom that creates your. That's what actually creates the loop, and we're gonna have to squeeze that together afterwards for the um, for the underspin for the for it to actually hold on to. Now, one thing I've I have played around with a, a bunch is the the way that these go goes in there now <clears throat> there's a little tab there and that can go back towards the bait or it can go towards the front towards the head it can go either way it'll fit in the mold either way now personally um, I think I've been doing it backwards and I think some of these fit better than others actually I take that back for the bigger mold they only run the one way they face towards the back. They don't seem to be fitting quite well. I think I'm thinking of the little the little mold. That one actually does both ways. So for now, we're gonna use these bigger, and I think these are like, I can't remember what they are. A 535 or something like that. <coughs> actually it says right here on the on the mold. It uses a W-E-Y. 525 and that's the bigger the bigger eyelets so again you have to have these little wire forms for the bottom of the mold to actually do the underspin portion that's the wire that hangs down for the underspin so we're going to go ahead and insert all those in and i'm still waiting for my lead to heat up so it'll be a few minutes so this is good because we can get all of these ready and pour them So for the bigger one, again, W-E-Y, 525. <clears throat> and they do use eyes. These will take eyes after we get them painted. And they will be different sizes. And I can see the different sizes in the cavity right now for the eyes. And I'm not even sure that I've done a uh, 5 eighths yet. I've done a half, I've done a ton of 3 eighths, and I've done some quarters. 
but I have never done the 5 8 And again, I, I keep seeing a lot of people that make lead baits that use like mold release in their molds. I'm a very big stickler for keeping my molds clean and I don't want anything in them. I'm not going to smoke them with, with, the, with soot and I'm not going to use mold release. I don't do that. You don't need to. And if you're having trouble with some of them, you can heat them up and they will be a lot better. Now, I, I've done that before in the past where I've put all the hardware in, closed, the, closed it together, and then actually had it set on top of the lead pot for a few minutes just to heat everything up to get it nice and hot so everything pours correctly. And I've got the lead pot that you pull up on the handle and it pours into, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And uh, you can kind of put the tip of it into the, each one of the, the cavities here and kind of it kind of forces it down in there a little bit better and it makes it a lot easier to do. But I think for starters, we're just gonna go ahead and I may heat it up a little bit on the top just, just to get a, a little bit of heat just so we don't run into any issues. But these all fill in very nicely. This is these are very nice molds. So again, I don't I'm not a big believer in the mold release. I'm not a big believer in smoking molds. So let's get to the other one which takes the WEY 375s, which are a lot smaller for the, the, the portion on the bottom. And these hooks are a little bit different too. This takes Eagle Claws, 570 or 575 style hooks. And it takes all sorts of different sizes. And I try to follow the sizes on this one because it's got so many different ones. So it starts with a two aught goes down to a, uh, you can use a two or a one in this 3 16 and then it goes to a one aught, a number one, a number two, and a number four. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and just do one complete set. So right now, these are number fours, very tiny hook. So that'll be in this last one, which is 1 16th ounce. Then we're gonna go ahead and do a number two and the 3 32nd. Sometimes these little ones are a little bit more tougher to align in the molds. <clears throat> and we're going to do a, a size one here somewhere. I thought I had a size one. Must be out about, here we go, size one. Thought I was missing it there. It's right here. Here we go. Size one for one eighth, and a one aught for the five thirty seconds. And I think we'll go ahead and do a one aught for the three sixteenths. Actually, now we'll go ahead and do two aught for the three sixteenths, and we'll do two aught for the one quarter. That way, we got some little bit of size here. These, and this, and this is good too because I need a couple of these to throw in my tackle box. I, I love throwing these underspins. Great versatile lure. Um, even if even if you don't swim them, you can drag them on the bottom. I know I've had a lot of success dragging these on the bottom for smallmouth on rocky shoals and whatnot. Always, always a great bait to throw. So I'm going to put these back. I'm going to put the Let's go ahead and just put these little wire forms in here. And like I said, these are tiny ones and you can put them in backwards. And I do like to put them in backwards because I think they hold up better. But in the big ones, they just don't. Sometimes if you rub them on the bottom too much, that spinner will just fall right off. When I put in backwards, just flip it around. Put it in right. <clears throat> And that's all you need. You need the wire form on the bottom, the WEY, and you need a hook, the certain size hook. And we're gonna see, hopefully, I downsized one hook in this bigger mold, and I wanna see if it works, and I think it will. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Okay, so I've got all my wire, wire forms in there, my little ones, 
and my bigger ones in the bigger mold <coughs> and we are ready to go so I'm gonna heat these up a little bit on top of the the uh, lead pot and the lead pot is ready so I'm gonna go ahead and preheat these a little bit and all I do for that just to show you guys is I stick it right there on top of the mold now it's got all the hardware in it and it's just sitting there and it'll just heat up so I'm gonna give it a minute or two and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the big one and then I'm gonna flip the camera around so you guys can see me pour while I'm doing this okay guys so I think we're ready I'm gonna take this off the top it's heated up I can feel that it's pretty warm it's not super warm yet but it's pretty warm now what I was saying about forcing it is you can put the tip of it right into the mold and pour it pull, put it right in there pour it put it right in there pour it put it right in there pour it that kind of forces the lead into the mold so we're going to go ahead and do the bigger one while we're here and i didn't heat this one up and i will show you if it's too cold what it does A lot of lead in that big one. So the bigger one, let's do the smaller one first. The smaller one came out perfect. So sometimes you'll have little where it didn't fill in the hook or the uh, bait keeper very all the way. Sometimes that happens. But like this one's got a little one. But it's still got a little bit of a bait keeper on there. It's okay. See, it'll keep the bait on there. Not a problem. But this one filled out good. This one filled out good. This one didn't fill out too crazy. So again, a little bit more heat probably would have been okay, but it'll still work. It'll be fine. This one came out perfect. And that one came out perfect as well. So see the hook the bait keeper there but everything came out great so after you pull these out like that <clears throat> you just take the take a I, th I like to take a, a flat flush pair of cutter cutters flush cutters and just cut that right front right off cut that little sprue right off come at it underneath the front like this from the front of the nose back up towards so let me show you that again right there like just like that and just cut that right off and you don't even really need to you can you can hit it a little bit with a file if you want to to knock down some of that but it, it really it's not even needed I've gotten to the point now where I don't even bother it cuts them cuts them pretty clean so you don't even really need to worry about it I'll show you one more time on this one right there cut it that's it okay so that's a round of the small ones So you can see all the tiny guys here we got and again this goes from this goes from 1 8th or 1 16th which is the tiniest one right here <clears throat> to a 332 a 1 8th a 532 a 316th and a 1 quarter that's what the small one does and I, I've fished with these already and they are fantastic they're great because even if you lose the underspin portion of it on the bottom if it ends up coming off it kind of becomes a little little jig without it anyway so it's kind of perfect so let's put that one off to the side we did that one already here's the big ones and without even pouring those without even pouring or without even heating them up they all actually came out perfect the bait keeper stayed the bait keeper stayed there no problems but same idea, same thing. Just take a little foot pair of flush cutters, cut off the front part, tip. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Now some of them will bleed a little bit over on the bait keeper. You get like little stragglers of lead. Just trim it off. But not bad. Not bad at all. And the eye sockets are gonna be different size, like I said. So that's about the only thing that we're gonna really have to contend with 
is the the eye size when we go to put eyes on them. And just for just for this video, I think all I'm going to do is uh, pearl white for a color. And sometimes these stick in here pretty good. And sometimes you get some, like I said, you get a little bit of a lead bleed off, but you get a little bit too much extra on the bottom of that hook there, and you can just cut it off. And again, just take this, cut it off. And if, and if this is loose, if the wire harness is loose, which it will be a little bit, once you put a coat of paint on there, it'll be fine. It'll be completely fine. So let me go ahead and get the rest of these trimmed up. And that one only makes that one only makes five different sizes, but um, but it only makes five. So little one makes six. Big one makes five. So there's your there's your bigger mold with the bigger hooks, bigger underspins, and the bigger wire forms. And like I said, these these have been my favorite. I've actually I actually had the bigger mold for a long time. I had the HHU five for a long time, and then I decided to get the six because I love making these so much, and the big ones work so well that I wanted to try the little ones. So we got the big ones there. We got the little ones here. These are for uh, somebody else that I had sitting here, so I'll probably just put those off to the side. So we've got two big batches here. We're gonna paint these, powder paint them, and we're just gonna do some pearl white. And I will show you how to close in the eyes for the actual underspin portion of it, and then we'll go into the other hardware that you're going to need for putting these together. I just wanted to uh, come back and show you guys how we close these little these little eyelets. So got them there. All we're going to do is just take a pair of these are a pair of um, split ring pliers, and I use these all the time. But all you're going to do. Just give it a little squeeze in the back side. You're just basically going to close that loop. That's all you're really going to do. And it doesn't have to be perfectly closed. Just enough to where when we paint it, the paint's going to seal it up pretty good. But as long as the snap, the um, split ring doesn't come out of there, it's not a big deal. So just like that. We're going to do that on all these. And again, it's very repetitive, so I'm not going to show you every single one. And I have had some snap on me in the past, so you just got to be very careful, very delicate. Don't don't use all your brute strength trying to get them closed, and don't don't worry so much about getting them closed all the way. Just enough to where it's going to complete the circle enough, and, and it's not going to come out. So the bigger ones, these are the bigger ones. They're a little bit more stout, so got to squeeze them. I actually squeeze them a little bit two different kind of ways just to get it closed up and again they don't need to be perfect as long as that as long as it doesn't come out of that slot right there which it's not gonna and it'll be painted up as well so let's do the rest I'm gonna do the rest of these off camera and then we're gonna go ahead and paint them all right guys we're ready for paint turn on the heat gun this is the tip of the heat gun here I'm gonna go ahead and use we're gonna use pearl white for the paint I'm gonna go ahead and shake it up like I always do and you can probably do a couple of these, maybe two at a time, depending on how big they are. But these ones right here are the smaller ones. I'm gonna start with the smaller ones. So we're just gonna go ahead and heat it up. Both sides. Heat it up good enough to get some heat, just get the paint to stick on there. And then dip it in. And just get it to where it's painted all the lead, not the hook. And if you got to just wipe off some of the hook, you can. That's what I'm doing now, just wiping off some of the hook. So there it is, coated. Thin coat of paint. You don't want too much on these. You don't want drips. You don't want drops. And you don't want the eyelets to get filled with paint. Now, sometimes they will get filled with paint, and I use a little husky poker tool. And all we do is poke through the paint to get it out of there. Just like this on that one. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out.
Then we just heat it up again and it'll melt the paint down. And there you go. So it's all painted up, ready to go. Eyelets are clear. The eyelets clear for the spinner underneath. And that's all we gotta do. So I'm gonna do that one and I'm gonna do one giant one just to show you guys how this works. This is the big one. This is like the, I think it's a 5 8 ounce. So this is significantly bigger than the last one we just did. So we just gotta heat it up real good. Gotta heat it up real good on both sides. And this one's a little bit bigger. It's got a lot more lead. So we got it good. We're gonna go ahead and dip it in. Knock off the extra. Return it to the heat. Get the paint all shined up. And then again, these are gonna get baked for 20 minutes before we actually get to put the spinners on. So it's gonna take a few minutes. Of a little bit of interruption here in the middle of the video. Okay, so there's that one. I didn't even need to clean out any holes or nothing. That's the big one, 5 eighths. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these off camera. And then we will come back and I'll show you the painting process or I'll show you all of them put together on the rack that I have. And then once I get the rack filled up, we will go ahead and put it in the uh, toaster oven for about 20 minutes to bake. Looks like we got them all done. The first set towards me is all the small ones. The one in the middle is some bigger ones, the, the bigger mold, all of them. And then the back row is just a couple that I wanted to make for myself. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and get the toaster oven fired up to 350. And we are going to put these in here Make sure that they're spaced apart enough to where they don't hit each other. Hanging nice. Nice and easy. Shut the door. Bake them for 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and put a glove on. And I'm going to take my second glove and I'm gonna set it down on my workbench my plastics workbench. I'm gonna take these out. I'm gonna go ahead and set these down. I'm just gonna double check and make sure that the eyelets are good. But I think from what I can see right now, I think we're all set. And I'm just gonna let them swing there and cool down for a little while. And then once we get done with them cooling down I'll take them off the rack we'll bring them back over to the bench and we'll put on the hardware all right so we're all set we got them all cooled down <clears throat> just kind of arrange these by size they're gonna be a little bit different uh, eye size wise and I think I've got the biggest one here I've got is eh, it might be a bigger than the six I don't know I think that might actually take a seven or an eight so let me just go grab some of those <coughs> all these are eyes aren't going to be the same color but and just so you guys are aware i get all my eyes from a company called um, ladyflytire.com and they're pretty pretty inexpensive she does a pretty good job and let's just i'm just going to see if this eye fits this is a seven millimeter eye and this may be a little bit too big Yeah, it's a little bit too big. Probably roll with a six on that one. So we probably won't need them that big. So six millimeter and smaller is gonna be the, the key. All right, well, these are all cooled down and I think we're ready to do the hardware portion. And I'm just gonna show you a couple of them and then we will, uh, I'll, I'll do the rest off camera and then what we'll do is I'll show you all of them when we're done. And I may even do some plastic baits to go along with these just so that you guys can see what I'm talking about as far as a four inch swim bait goes. So <clears throat> these are little barrel swivels with two 
split rings, one on each end, and you can buy them just like that. So you get the the ball bearing swivel with the split rings, and I get these on Amazon. You can get them in a hundred pack or more, and they're they're pretty cheap. So and they and they work great. So I just buy these off of Amazon, fairly cheap, fairly inexpensive. But I put the pointed end towards the I put the pointed end always on the eyelet of the bait, <clears throat> and it just I think it's just preference. You don't have to if you don't want to. It's going to work the same way. It's still a ball bearing no matter what. So I use these split ring pliers to get it started on there to spread the split, split ring apart. And then I just use my fingers to push the rest of it on to get it just turned into place so it fits on there. So now the split ring is on the bait. Okay. And then we just go ahead and add a spinner. And on this one, the blade length I like to use <coughs> on all these bigger ones is a uh, size 3. And it's a uh, willow blade. So size 3 willow. Put them on here. This is, these are fairly easy to get onto the split rings and put them on. The toughest part is actually getting the split ring on the bottom of the actual jig head itself. And there you go. It's on there. Just double check yourself to make sure that the split rings are in everything correctly. Sometimes they get overdone, um, but that's it. That's that's exactly what you do right there. So we will go ahead and put eyes on this one just so that you guys can see <clears throat> an example of what they look like. I'm gonna use some six millimeter eyes on this big one because it's a big boy. This is like a five eighths, I think. So again, I use an X-Acto knife. I use some of the Loctite Super Glue Ultra Gel Control. I just put a little tiny dot in the center of the bait like that. You can see it. And then I just take the eye and I like the point, the point of the eye, if there is one on the eye, to be towards the back. That's just how I, I like them, mine set up. And very delicately put it on there and put it put it in the place where you want it so that's what it ends up looking like when you're all said and done so beautiful little underspin with a three inch blade and again I like to put a that's a five odd hook I like to put a um, a good size four inch almost looks like a it's like a do it molds makes a ripper mold that would go really well with it or there's one that I use from uh, BTS molds. I think it is a, uh, oh, I can't even remember the number right now. Six something, 600 and something. But uh, maybe I'll put that in the details down below. <clears throat> but a great, great swim bait. Actually, I've got it sitting next to me. It's a 607 swim bait. And it's a ribbed swim bait like a Kitek, four inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put the other eye on the other side of this. Just because I want to have one completed. Again, just a dot of glue. I like to put that dot. The bigger eyes, you can... Sometimes you can use your fingers on the bigger eyes. But I still like to have the... Um, I still like to have the exacto knife to help you put it on there. But that's it. Both sides. So, came out great. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate that and do the rest of these. And then uh, real quick, I'm going to do the smallest one. So I'm going to do the biggest one and I'm going to do the smallest one just so you can see. And these ball bearing swivels with the split rings, <coughs> there's two sizes. There's actually more than that. But this is a size one, which I use for the bigger ones. This is a size zero. This is as small as they get, but it's still pretty large. I would prefer to have them smaller than that. But they really, I, I haven't found any yet smaller than that. So if you guys know anywhere where I can get some smaller um, split rings with the ball bearing swivel in them, please let me know. But again, I just did the same thing. Open up the split ring with my pair of pliers here. And got it started on the bottom of the bait. And sometimes it doesn't want to go because it gets caught in the 
Sometimes the split ring doesn't want to cooperate and it tries to go out through the ball bearing. But there you go. So here's the tiniest one. So still a pretty good size ball bearing. You can see that from there. And then the spinner I like to use is for, for the tiniest one is a size zero. And I've got, I've got these blades, zero, one, two, and threes. And I, I typically don't deviate too much. The threes I use the most because they're on the bigger underspins. But I use the zeros on these little tiny guys. And then I just work my way up where I feel like I feel like it still doesn't, you know, kill the bait or whatever. It actually still still looks good, still performs well, and doesn't take away too much from the bait. But these are pretty tiny. This one especially is very tiny. So there it is. So there's that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the eyes to that just so you can see how tiny they actually are. These are a size 3 millimeter. So we're going from 6 down to 3. And these things are probably the smallest eyes. I think you can get one millimeters online. But these these are more like a cat eye type eye. So pretty difficult to put on there. I've been doing them for a little while. So you can tell that I've done this a few times. But there it is. I mean, this thing is so tiny that's a, again that's a 1 16th ounce so that is the smallest you can get but so tiny but crappie jigs man these things would kill and then these paired up with the um epic bait mold um 1.75 inch prey bait or 1.7 inch prey bait man what a deadly combo and i'll actually once I get all these put together, I'm going to grab a couple of those. I think I've got some of those made up. Or actually, I'll make some up specifically for this. And uh, I'll show you guys. But let me put the other eyeball on this side. Try not to mess with the orientation of it. It just wants to go sideways. Always wants to go sideways and the glue wants to... Start messing with you. Okay, there it goes. So, both sides done. And that's what we're doing. So, <clears throat> I'm going to turn the camera off. Do the rest of these real quick. Probably take me a little bit here to get them done. And then I'm going to do some plastics in the background too. And I will put them together. And we'll come back and wrap this video up. And I'll show you what it looks like. Finishing it up. Just did some... Just did a uh, nice little thumbnail picture, but I wanted to show you guys, let me stand this up, this camera up and I'll flip it around. <clears throat> what I wanted to show you guys was, these are pretty versatile for a lot of things. So I think this is the, I'm trying to remember what size this is. I've got this little, got the mold right here in front of me. This is a half inch right here. <clears throat> and a half inch does really well on this big four inch. 607 swim bait and I'll show you what I mean it's got a nice little hook slot on it but push the head all the way up or you could use a Kai tech as well that would work really well too I'm not sure why this isn't going in there all the way it's like the plastic folded up on me there it goes okay Anyway, plastic is kind of ripping up on me. <clears throat> but anyway, so there you go. Perfect for a 4-inch swim bait. Um, the Kitek 4 inches, the 3.8s or whatever they're called. But that is a great, perfect size for those. And then the 3.2-inch uh, slouch is really good, I would say, probably on the quarter inch. So if you put this on a quarter inch bait... Get it up through there. I mean, that's going to be deadly. And you could size them a little bit different if you wanted to, but I'd say quarter inch, no less than a quarter inch for those. That's a 3.2 inch uh, epic slouch. 
So <coughs> that one's pretty sweet. And then if you're going for tiny, like this really tiny one, I wouldn't say the, the smallest, smallest. The, the 1 16th is pretty dang small. But maybe like the the next one up, which I'm not even sure what it is. I'll have to look at it in the mold here. It is the 330 seconds. I mean, that's that's pretty perfect. And this is kind of versatile. This is great for crappies. This is great for smallmouth in the river and the creeks and that kind of stuff. But man, I'll tell you, the action with this on this bait, I mean, it's just, it's fantastic. So <clears throat> there you have it guys, making underspins. And again, I just did pearl white, and there's actually a couple I just did for myself that I just did some different different things. Like I, I did the pearl white regular, and then what I did was I put a little bit of chartreuse on the tip of the bait, just to give it a little bit a little bit different color. So I'm kind of experimenting. I'm probably going to do some more with some different colors here at some point. But I was thinking this that chartreuse with you know you know with this white with the chartreuse back, these uh, dual laminates. So. I'm going to try it, experiment a little bit, and see how we make out. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. I really appreciate you all taking the time to watch my videos. Uh, I'm going to keep cranking these videos out at least once a week. If you got any recommendations, please comment below. I would like to know really what you guys would like to see, if there's some other, something else you'd like to see. I have a ton of lead molds, and I have a ton of plastic molds. Just ask, and I will tell you what I've got. And, we'll, and we can make a video on it, specifically a specific one if you guys want to see a specific bait being made as a dual laminate or maybe even a triple laminate or even just single injection but just just comment below and let me know what you want to see so again thank you guys so much for watching please like comment share subscribe and remember keep on baiting